Me llamo Sara. Nací en Estambul en 1954 y hay muchos, muchos años. Era un día de Pesaj y mi madre nos contaba que frío en primero los bimuelicos. What you're hearing right now might sound like Spanish, but it's not. Judeo Spanish, also known as Ladino, is a Romance language rooted in Old Spanish, enriched by centuries of Sephardic history. It began in Spain, but the 1492 Edict of Expulsion scattered its speakers across the Ottoman Empire, including the Balkans, Turkey, and North Africa, and into countries like France, Italy, the Netherlands, Morocco, and England. Today, Judeo Spanish is spoken by Sephardic minorities in over 30 countries, with the largest community in Israel. Once the lingua franca of Sephardic Jews across the Balkans and the Middle East, Judeo Spanish faces severe endangerment today. Most native speakers are elderly, and the language is not often passed down to younger generations. Despite this, there's a revival effort, particularly in Sephardic music and cultural preservation, offering hope for the survival of this rich linguistic heritage. In recent decades, the term Ladino has become widely associated with Judeo Spanish, particularly in Israel, the US, and Spain thanks to efforts by institutions like the Autoridad Nacional de Ladino. However, many native speakers reject this label, reserving Ladino for the sacred word-for-word -word translations of Hebrew and Aramaic texts into Old Spanish, used in religious contexts. Historically, Ladino referred to literary Spanish, or translations, between languages during medieval Spain. Interestingly, the term's origins trace back to el ladinar, meaning to translate. However, Judeo-Spanish Ladino should not be confused with the Latin language of Italy, which is a separate Romance language with no connection to Jewish history or Spanish. Okay, now let's look at the history of this language. In medieval Iberia, now Spain and Portugal, Jews spoke a variety of Romance dialects. These Jews play a significant role in the development of Spanish as a prestige language, particularly through their translations of Arabic and Hebrew texts often originally translated from Greek. These words were then retranslated into Latin by Christians for dissemination across Europe. After the 1490s, when Jews were expelled from Spain and Portugal, many resettled in the Ottoman Empire, in regions like the Balkans, Western Asia, notably Turkey, in North Africa, especially Morocco, these Jews developed distinctive Romance dialects influenced by Hebrew, Arabic, and other local languages, resulting in what is now known as Judeo-Spanish. By the 16th century, the mobility of Sephardic Jews significantly impacted the development of Judeo-Spanish. By centuries end, Spanish had become the dominant language for Sephardic commerce across Italy and the Eastern Mediterranean. The standardization was further bolstered by the hiring of tutors to teach Castilian using Hebrew script and the influence of itinerant rabbis who preached in the vernacular. The close relationship between Judeo-Spanish and Spanish fostered trade among Sephardim, especially between the Ottoman Empire, the Netherlands, and Conversos. Jews who had converted to Christianity in the Iberian Peninsula. As time passed, a body of Judeo-Spanish literature emerged. Early works were mainly translated from Hebrew, but by the 18th century, with the decline of Hebrew as a vehicle for rabbinic instruction, original works began to appear. These included secular genres such as poetry, history, theater, and biographies, often influenced by French, as French became the language of diplomacy in the Sephardic world. Judeo-Spanish dialects evolved regionally, with many dialects exhibiting limited mutual intelligibility due to heavy borrowing from local languages like Greek, Turkish, Arabic, and, in the Balkans, Slavic languages. Some Judeo-Spanish dialects had as much as 30% of their vocabulary borrowed from non-Spanish languages. Interestingly, some words from Judeo-Spanish made their way into neighboring languages. For instance, the word palavra, meaning word in Judeo-Spanish, passed into Turkish, Greek, and Romanian, where it evolved to mean nonsense or humbug. Judeo-Spanish was the common language of Salonika, now Thessaloniki, during the Ottoman period. Judeo-Spanish remained widely spoken until the Holocaust, when 50,000 Salonikan Jews were deported. In 1928, there were nearly 63,000 native speakers of Judeo-Spanish in Greece. The language's prominence in Salonika was so significant that the city's most prestigious monument was known by its Judeo-Spanish name, Las Encantadas, the Enchanted Women. From the 17th to 19th centuries, Judeo-Spanish was the predominant Jewish language in the Holy Land, although its dialect differed from the one spoken in Greece and Turkey. Throughout the 20th century, Judeo-Spanish experienced a sharp decline. Many speakers were victims of the Holocaust, and survivors who moved to Israel were encouraged to adopt Hebrew. Similarly, in the United States, Sephardic Jews were encouraged to speak English. 
In Turkey, where there remains a sizable Sephardic community, Judeo-Spanish was regarded as a low-prestige language, and parents refrained from teaching it to their children to avoid them developing a Jewish accent. As of 2011, the majority of fluent speakers of Judeo-Spanish were over the age of 70, and the younger generations had little to no knowledge of the language. Efforts to preserve and promote Judeo-Spanish have included radio broadcasts, such as those by Col Yisrael and Radio Nacional de España, and the production of films like Novia Que Te Vea and The House on Chelucha Street. There have also been initiatives to publish modern Judeo-Spanish folktales and translations of classical works. Notably, Masheha Elian, a Holocaust survivor, translated the Odyssey into Judeo-Spanish in his later years. Judeo-Spanish shares grammar, phonology, and about 60% of its vocabulary with Spanish, but also shows similarities to southern Spain and South American dialects, such as yeismo, ella ella for she, and ceseo. It preserves archaic features from Old Spanish, like the use of X and J as sh and j, for example, bajo and bajo, lo versus modern Spanish bajo, and the retention of older S and Z sounds, for example, corazón for hearts instead of the modern corazón. The distinction between B and V is maintained in Judeo-Spanish, unlike modern Spanish where both are B. It also shows influence from Portuguese, Catalan, and other Iberian languages due to their shared medieval roots, with examples like Dainda, Still, and Fija, Daughter. Judeo-Spanish also shares some features with Portuguese, such as palatalized S sounds, for example, Seis pronounced as Sesh. Hebrew and Aramaic contribute many religious terms, such as Haham, Rabbi, and Kal, Synagogue. Turkish influence is notable, with words like emre ne'ar, rejoice, from Turkish imren mek, and borrowed Persian Arabic terms such as bilbiliko, nightingale, and gam, sorrow. French has influenced Judeo-Spanish through westernization, bringing words like abasur, lampshade, and fusil, gun. Judeo-Spanish also absorbed words from Greek, South Slavic, Italian, and Romanian, reflecting the diverse linguistic environment of its speakers. Okay, now let's get into the linguistic side of things, starting with phonology. Judeo-Spanish's phonemic inventory varies by dialect, but consists of 24 to 26 consonants and 5 vowels. Here are consonant phonemes in Istanbul Judeo-Spanish. And here are consonant phonemes in other dialects. Now we have vowels. Some notes. On the vowels, front-rounded vowels only appear in French loanwords, they do not exist in every dialect. And let's talk about some phonological differences from Spanish. Judeo-Spanish generally does not contrast the trilled R and the tapped R, though some variation exists. Nue in Spanish becomes moe in some Judeo-Spanish dialects, for example, nuevo to muevo. Judeo-Spanish has separate phonemes for je and je, for example, journal versus jugar. Whereas in modern Spanish, these phonemes are replaced by the J, J. Judeo Spanish has little or no diphthongization of tonic vowels. For example, durme instead of duerme. The final S is often dropped in words, similar to Andalusian Spanish. For example, amargastes becomes amargatex, the form Dios becomes Dio, and is sometimes explained as a folk etymology, removing the final S for a monotheistic implication. However, the O is an Old Spanish variant derived from Latin deum. Okay, now let's get into morphology and syntax. Judeo-Spanish retains the use of both tu and vos, which differs from most modern Spanish dialects in the commonly used usted. Additionally, vosotros and vosotros is used for plural address, and the third-person pronouns el, ella, ellos, and ellas are often used in formal contexts. Usted and ustedes are not used in Judeo-Spanish, a distinct feature compared to standard Spanish. Alright, now let's get into verb conjugation. Here's the regular conjugation for the present tense. As you can see, verbs are split into three endings, er, ir, and ar. The example verbs will be the er verb comer, to eat, the ir verb vivir, to live, and the ar verb favelar, to speak. This does not include irregularities. All three verb types share conjugation for the first person singular. ER and IR verbs share all conjugations except for the first person plural. And now we see the preterite, or the past tense. There are a few differences. ER and IR verbs share all conjugations, and AR verbs share both the first person singular and plural with the other verb types. Now we see the imperfect. Put simply, the imperfect is also the past tense, but for continuous actions done in the past. For example, I was eating, I used to eat, etc. 
we can see that ER and IR verbs share all conjugations and AR verbs do not share any. Judeo Spanish uses the typical Spanish plural morpheme S for pluralization, but it also retains Hebrew plural endings for Hebrew derived words. For example, ladron thief becomes ladronim, plural of ladron in Judeo Spanish, and hermano brother becomes hermanim in the Hebrew plural form. Feminine nouns ending in A may take either the Spanish plural S or the Hebrew ot ending. For example, kehila synagogue may become kehilot or kehilas. Judeo Spanish has more distinct gendering in some nouns and adjectives compared to standard Spanish. For example, adjectives like grande, big, and inferior, inferior, may show gendered forms more prominently than in standard Spanish, as in vozas, feminine, and fuentas. The forms cualo and cuala are used for which or what in some dialects, differing from the standard cual in Spanish. Judeo Spanish follows the basic Spanish sentence structure of subject verb object. Its syntax is largely similar to Spanish in that it maintains a nominative accusative alignment in a fusional structure, where words are inflected for grammatical relations. Now let's talk about orthography. The Academia Nacional del Ladino and the Autoridad Nacional del Ladino are responsible for regulating the orthography of Judeo Spanish, offering speakers a choice between two writing systems, the Hebrew script and the Latin script. The Hebrew script was the traditional choice, particularly before the fall of the Ottoman Empire, while the Latin script has become more prominent in the modern era. Judeo Spanish and Hebrew script uses the Rashi script for printed works and Solitreo for handwritten text. In the Latin script, the orthography uses an interpunct to distinguish sounds like S plus X, written S interpunct H, and SH, written SH, and it uses a Q accent marks to mark irregular stress patterns. The irregular stress rule is as follows. Paroxytones, which is when stress occurs on the penultimate syllable, occurs in words ending in a vowel or in n, s, or sh. Oxytones, which is when stress occurs on the final syllable, occurs in words ending with any other consonant. Some letters have specific phonetic rules, such as ch for ch, dj for j, ny for ny, sh for sh, and x for g plus z, only used in certain dialects. Before the standardized orthographies were adopted, various writing systems were used. The Greek alphabet and Cyrillic script were sometimes used in the past, although these are now very rare. In Turkey, the Turkish variant of the Latin alphabet was most commonly used, particularly after the Sephardic communities were decimated during the Holocaust. This system was widespread among the remaining Sephardic Jews. The American Library of Congress has a specific romanization standard for Ladino. That's going to be the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope I was able to teach you guys something about this incredible language. Unfortunately, it is endangered, which is why some speakers are working hard to make sure that it doesn't go extinct. If this video inspired you to learn more and maybe even learn a bit of the language yourself, I'll link some non-sponsored resources in the description below. Make sure to join my 125 plus member Discord server where we talk about languages and linguistics, and as always, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and let me know what I should do in the future. I'll see you guys in the next one.